my opinion, WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia is already one of the most hyped and best built WrestleManias in recent memory. In previous years, the WWE was guilty of only really hyping up the main events. However, I feel that WrestleMania 40 has been appropriately hyped and built from the undercard all the way through to the main events. So today we're gonna measure our level of hype for every single match because we're gonna be tier ranking every single match in terms of hype and in terms of build going into WrestleMania 40 and we're gonna rank them from Hall of Fame all the way down to trash. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, ring that bell for notifications if you're a wrestling fan. I know you're gonna fall in love with this YouTube channel because we always upload daily wrestling content. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so here are the tiers that we're gonna be working with. We have Hall of Fame, great, good, meh, and trash. We're actually gonna start off with a couple of matches that aren't confirmed, but I think are gonna get added to the WrestleMania card. So let's start with Legado del Fantasma versus the LWO. Presumably, Legado del Fantasma will also be adding Dominic Mysterio into their team. And in my opinion, the addition of Dominic Mysterio truly helps elevate this match to make it feel even more special and make it feel even more like a grudge match. Of course, we know that there's already existing heat between Rey Mysterio and his son Dominic Mysterio, but I do believe that the WWE has done a really great job of overall building up a lot of hatred and a lot of on-screen hype between LWO and Legado del Fantasma. I will say that I believe that the WWE did a better job of creating a WrestleMania-worthy type of match between Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar, and they ended up having an absolutely fantastic match that was interrupted by Dominic Mysterio on SmackDown. So I really don't think that we're going to be getting another Santos Escobar versus Rey Mysterio match. I think that this is a pretty safe bet that we are going to be getting a faction versus faction match. And when I look at all of the competitors, we have a combination of legends with the likes of Carlito and the likes of Dominic Mysterio. I'm just kidding. Dominic Mysterio is not a legend. He will be, but Rey Mysterio. And then we have a lot of up and coming potential main event stars like Dominic Mysterio, like Santos Escobar. And then we have a, a crop of amazingly talented and incredibly athletic talent in the likes of Joaquin Wild, uh, Cruz del Toro, Angel Garza, I know I sometimes say Angel and Garza, and Humberto Carrillo. So when I look at the, at the hatred between the two, when I look at the talent, when I look at the pedigree of the legends that are already involved in this, I'm hyped for this. Now, I wouldn't say that I'm in the Hall of Fame tier of hype, but I am. Uh, I would say that I would put this into the great category. I really believe that this can be an absolute barn burner of a match that could low-key steal the show. If I have to add like an extra layer of hype that would honestly put this completely over the top is if somehow Bad Bunny got involved in this match at WrestleMania, that would be absolutely incredible. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Bad Bunny has history with the likes of Carlito, Rey Mysterio, and yes, Santos Escobar when they were both on the same side back in Backlash 2023, and of course, Dominic Mysterio as well. So I feel pretty confident that even though this hasn't been announced, they've done a great job for me to put it into the great category. Okay, I'm gonna get funky with you because now I'm not gonna put a match. I'm gonna put a potential speculative match and we're gonna talk about Jade Cargill. Jade Cargill has her first official appearance on SmackDown a couple of weeks before WrestleMania. She is for sure going to get added to the WrestleMania card in some way, shape or form. Here's the thing. I don't know in what capacity she could potentially get added. We're gonna talk about that in just a second, but let's say that this was a singles match. In my opinion, if this is a singles match with anyone other than Bianca Belair, I love Tiffany Stratton, but I don't think that they can build up enough hype for me to really get excited over this. So let's pretend that for now, that the Jade Cargill match ends up being just a random one-on-one -on -one match to showcase her strength at WrestleMania. I'm not particularly on board with that necessarily. So I'm gonna put that into the meh category. It's not in trash because just simply the aura of Jade Cargill is enough to propel this into a realm where I'm interested. But the fact that it's such a short amount of time for her to really be able to build a true one-on-one -on -one feud with somebody, I can't go above meh. However, we're not done talking about Jade Cargill because I'm gonna to toss a couple of options at you. Next up, let's talk about another match that has not yet been announced and that's a match for the 
WWE women's tag titles that could potentially happen between Naomi, Bianca Belair, as well as the Kabuki Warriors, who are the current champions in Kairi Sane and Asuka. I think that they've actually done a really good job of setting this up. I feel like there is enough history that makes sense between the members of Damage Control and Bianca Belair dating back like what seems like almost an entire year at this point, a feud that started all the way back in the buildup to the EO Sky versus Bianca Belair match at Backlash 2023 that carried into SummerSlam, that carried into the cash-in, that carried into Survivor Series War Games. So there is plenty of animosity between all of these groups and uh, this group and damage control and Bianca Belair to, I, I believe, warrant a WrestleMania match. I do believe that Bianca Belair should be doing something bigger. It should have been against Charlotte Flair, but we're in a situation where that obviously can happen. In my opinion, I think that this is a good solution. I think that just the involvement of Bianca Belair in this tag team match, a tag team match that would help elevate the tag titles, uh, a tag team duo that could help elevate Naomi uh, and help reintroduce Naomi in, in, a, in the same breath as other main events like Bianca Belair and of course a match that in terms of paper there is enough animosity to justify a Wrestlemania feud uh, of course like I mentioned all the stuff that's happened between Bianca Belair and the Kabuki Warriors I will say if this match does end up happening I'm gonna say that the hype and the build-up for this has been pretty good hey folks do you want even more wrestling content because you could be getting more content over on patreon.com slash Santi Zap and we're gonna be adding a couple of things here to the patreon in the lead up to Wrestlemania 40 not only are you gonna to be getting the wrestling is cool podcast three days early the raw reviews the smackdown reviews but we're going to be doing watch alongs with synced footage of wrestlemania 30 and wrestlemania 27 and it's all going to be exclusive to patreon and that's all happening this week so go check it out patreon.com slash santi's app the link will be in the description of this video or it'll be the link in the pinned comment i'm done with the sellout sorry i gotta be able to buy groceries back to the video Okay, we're back to talking about Jade Cargill because that match that I just talked about, the tag match between Naomi and Bianca Belair and the Kabuki Warriors, that's an imaginary match. That match doesn't exist. That's still all headcanon because it hasn't been announced. One thing that I want to throw at you is the possibility of it not being a match for the tag titles and instead being a six-woman tag match because there are three active members of Damage Control that could be part of this match aside from EO Sky because you've got Kyrie you've got Asuka, and you have the newly returned fantastic Dakota Kai. So if it ends up being 3v2, we could look at a world where potentially we add Jade Cargill to even out the odds, and this does a couple of things. This gets a lot of people on the WrestleMania card, and this helps protect Jade Cargill, a person that I believe the WWE is trying to hide from us in terms of in-ring work and, you know, being in the ring with uh, five other like super professional workers um, that are, you know, top of their game right now can help mask uh, perhaps so some of those in-ring deficiencies that she's still working on. If this were to happen, I am still going to put this into the good category because I already have the tag match into the good category. I already spoke about all of the reasons why, but if you add Jade Cargill, even though Jade Cargill doesn't really have history with damage control, the aura is a good enough reason to justify it. I'm going to put that into the good category. Okay, enough fantasy booking. Now let's talk about the matches that actually exist, the matches that have already been announced for WrestleMania, and let's talk about my levels of hype for them. We have the six-team, 12-person ladder match for the WWE Undisputed Tag Titles, a match that I really hope ends up splitting the tag titles with presumably a team from SmackDown grabbing the tag, the, uh, the SmackDown belts and a team from Raw grabbing the, the Raw belts. I feel like that it's too perfect to not split the titles here. I digress though. In terms of hype, there isn't really too, too much. They've done a little bit in terms of creating a story and a narrative between all of these teams with Judgment Day recently going on Monday Night Raw and destroying all of the teams on the Raw side of things. And I wouldn't be surprised if they end up doing the same thing to the SmackDown side of things. The tournament has been fun, but again, in terms of narrative, it doesn't really go beyond this is gonna be a dope ass ladder match with, it, with a lot of awesome spots and it gets a lot of people on WrestleMania as well. Am I excited for this? Yeah, because I know that this is going to be a fantastic car wreck. Yeah, the story isn't as good as what's going on with Bianca Belair in Damage Control, but I know what the WWE can do with their ladder matches. I know that their ladder matches at WrestleMania are always absolutely freaking fantastic 
for that reason, in that reason alone, even though it's had no build, I'm freaking hyped for it. I'm gonna put this into the good category. AJ Styles versus LA Knight is the feud that nobody wanted, but I also believe it's the feud that people are starting to fall in love with. I know a lot of people wanted LA Knight to be chasing gold at WrestleMania, whether it was a world title, whether it was the Intercontinental, the US title, yeah, they wanted something for LA Knight when it comes to uh, trying to achieve what he's been trying to achieve in the WWE since being moved up to the main roster and winning championship gold. And yes, the AJ Styles match doesn't provide that, but it does give a LA Knight the biggest stage that he's ever participated in against a first ballot Hall of Famer, not just WWE Hall of Famer, just professional wrestling Hall of Famer in AJ Styles. Not only is this a big stage for LA Knight, but this is a really well-built feud that dates back months now. It dates back when uh, LA Knight took AJ Styles' place as John Cena's tag partner. It dates back to December when AJ Styles turned on LA Knight and attacked him from behind when he came back all buff. It dates back to their match at the Royal Rumble, the beef between the two of them. The AJ Styles flying 30 hours just to be petty and cost LA Knight his match for a chance at the World Heavyweight title. And now we're getting home invasion angles. We have LA Knight beating up TVs. This has been absolutely phenomenal. No pun intended, maybe a little bit intended, but okay, I'm not gonna take credit for it. It wasn't entirely intended. I think that the build for this, even though it's the match that no one asked for, the buildup and the hype for it has been objectively great. They have done a great job of getting us to care about something that we didn't want to the point where we're all very intrigued about how this match ends up going. And we still have two episodes of SmackDown where they can continue to do more shenanigans and continue to create this this hatred between the two of them. And I will say that out of all of the feuds and all of the matches that are uh, currently at WrestleMania, this is the match that feels the most personal, that feels like the most blood feud out of all of them. So I'm putting it into the great category. Now let's look at Jey Uso versus Jimmy Uso, which is kind of the reverse of AJ Styles versus LA Knight in that this is the match, this is the feud that we all wanted. However, it feels like the WWE just doesn't want to give this match the tender love and care that it needs to help us get excited for WrestleMania. I believe that the WWE is relying too heavily on the hype that they're building for the night one main event involving The Rock and Bloodline Rules to really help build up this match. And I feel like they're missing on that. Yes, I do believe that there is great justification for the match, for, for this match to happen at WrestleMania. We have had, uh, of course, the turn of Jimmy Uso on Jey Uso costing him the world title. We've had Jimmy cost him more than just that. He's cost him the Intercontinental US title, made him lose the tag titles as well. So there is good justification, but justification doesn't necessarily mean a good story or good hype. That is actually a very different thing. There, like I said, there's good justification to have this match at WrestleMania, but they have entirely almost relied on the justification for the match and the fact that it's the two brothers, the Uso brothers, as good enough. that That's all we need to do to hype this match. And I feel like they fumbled with that. Am I excited for this match? Yes, because I've been wanting this match for a very, very long time. But I'm also not going to lie to myself and say that the WWE has done a great job of building and hyping this up because I really don't think that they have. So I'm gonna put this into the meh category, which is kind of crazy to say, because like I said, I, I want this match. I've been wanting this match for a really long time and i'm i'm excited for the match purely off of the context that has been laid before the match was even even announced but in terms of like what they've done to hype up this match after it's been announced as of the making of this video it's been little to no effort so i'm gonna go mad now let's look at the wwe united states championship match triple threat for the united states championship between logan paul kevin owens and randy orton this is a two-pronged approach because we have heat of course and hype between logan paul and kevin owens that dates back to the royal rumble a feud that was fantastic leading into the royal rumble a match that ended in one of the most brilliant heel finishes that i've seen in recent memory with Kevin Owens getting caught with Logan Paul's brass knuckles absolutely brilliant and then of course we have the heat and the hype being built up between Logan Paul and Randy Orton that started at Elimination Chamber with Randy Orton beautifully RKOing um, Logan Paul out of nowhere and then Logan Paul 
feigning an injury, staying in the in the elimination chamber, and then attacking Randy Orton right before Randy Orton was about to cement his place at WrestleMania. All of that was absolutely fantastic. And ever since then, we continue to have even more fun buildup with Randy Orton crashing the Logan Paul and KSI celebration that Prime's become the new uh, main sponsor for the WWE PLEs. All of it, honestly, has been a tremendous amount of fun. This feud even involves Nick Aldis with Logan Paul trying to pressure Nick Aldis to take legal action and recourse and fine Randy Orton for what he's done. Honestly, this has just been a really, really fun feud. Has it been like hype? Like, am I excited for these guys to get in there and murder each other? Not necessarily, but the feud itself as a story has been built pretty well. But because of all of the people that are already involved, the fact that there's already history between Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, the history between Logan Paul, Randy Orton, the history between Randy Orton and Kevin Owens, for that, I'm excited and the WWE has done a great job to showcase the dynamics between all three people that are involved and they've done a great job of getting me hyped up. So I'm gonna say that this goes into the great category. Let's look at the other mid card title in the Intercontinental Championship in the match between Gunther the Rain General and Sami Zayn. I am skeptical about this match and I think I'm skeptical about this match because the WWE did a better job of creating hype, which is what we're talking about between Gunther and Chad Gable and they didn't really do a great job of creating hype between Sami Zayn and Gunther. However, at the very least, we're seeing on Monday Night Raw this struggle for Sami Zayn to get mentally right to be ready for Gunther and Chad Gable taking on this mentorship role to get Sami Zayn ready for his match with Gunther. So at the very least we still have some involvement from Chad Gable but up front as it is Gunther versus Sami Zayn it's lacking right now I'm not gonna go higher than the mech category it still has some time to get us really hyped for this uh, but as of right now I'm gonna put this into the mech category had this been Chad Gable Honestly, it might have been Hall of Fame. Next up, let's look at the WWE Women's World Championship match between the champion Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch. This is a match that four weeks ago had no hype, and that was the, the constant complaint from people like myself and people online that there was no hype for this match, but the WWE does WWE things and get us gets us excited seemingly out of nowhere and slowly they've done a great job of making us care about Becky Lynch's motivations and especially in the most recent episode of Monday Night Raw that brawl between Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley that broke out after Rhea Ripley said that she was going to make sure that Becky Lynch's daughter called her mommy instead honestly it's been some really really good stuff and I went from zero to 60 to me real quick to the point where I now care about this match. So I feel like the hype and the build has been great. Even if it started off really slow, they've really ramped things up in a great way. Let's look at the WWE Women's Championship match between champion Io Sky taking on the Royal Rumble winner, Bayley. And this feud works. It's been simple. It's, I won the Royal Rumble. I have this friend that's been the champion for a while, a friend that's been treating me horribly. So I'm gonna go after that friend. Friendship implodes. You have yourself a wrestling feud. It doesn't have to be more complicated than that and the WWE has done a great job of building this up. Not only has the WWE done a great job of building this up after Bailey won the Royal Rumble, but the WWE did a great job of building up the hype for the breakup of Damage Control leading into the Royal Rumble as well. What I will say is the problem is that most of the hype that I believe is there and they've done a good job of creating isn't really between Bailey and Sky. it's been between Bailey and everyone in Damage Control. So this feels like a 1v many situation. Meanwhile, the match is still 1v1. So even though the match uh, has been hyped really well in terms of story leading into it, I'm very curious as to what my feeling is going to be when all of the people that have been involved in this buildup, like the Kabuki Warriors and Dakota Kai, aren't in the ring or maybe aren't even at ringside when the bell actually rings. Am I actually going to be hyped for just Yosuke versus Bailey? The answer is probably yes. Yes, but I am being picky and I am nitpicking the situation because I have really enjoyed this hype. I have enjoyed this feud, but it's not perfect. It has its problems. And the problem is, is that the feud hasn't been between the two people that are actually stepping into the ring. So even though I do believe that the hype for this has been great and I would have put it into the great category, I'm going to bring it down just a smidge to the good category because I don't think that the WWE 
WWE has done an absolutely fantastic job of building the actual hype between the two people in the ring. Now let's look at the World Heavyweight Championship match between Drew McIntyre challenging the champion Seth Frickin Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. This match was a victim to the night one hype that's being built and there's another match that's a victim to the night one main event hype because Seth Rollins spent so much time focusing on helping build hype for the night one main event and in the process he forgot to help build hype for the main event caliber match that he has set up already against Drew McIntyre. This feud for the most part has been entirely carried by Drew McIntyre and typically that wouldn't work however Drew McIntyre has been so good and has been a renaissance in terms of this new heel character that he's created for himself that he's done a very good job of carrying this feud and ensuring that it doesn't fall into irrelevancy and over the last couple of weeks Seth Rollins has now finally turned his attention to Drew McIntyre and we've actually done a pretty good job of creating build and creating hype for this match but now you add the third element of CM Punk being added as a guest announcer in this match who might potentially end up becoming a referee during the match who could get physically involved during the match now we went from being like okay at the very least they kind of fixed this non-existing feud and now i kind of care about it too I really fucking care about it because CM Punk is involved. It's funny because CM Punk on the most recent episode of Monday Night Raw said that he was going to do something that they weren't able to do during his entire 10 year absence, regardless of your wife, regardless of your pyro, regardless of your stupid sword. He made them relevant. He helped make this feud relevant. That, that's an over exaggeration. I would say that the title of making this relevant does belong to Drew McIntyre, um, but the addition of CM Punk undoubtedly for me makes this far more exciting than it was before i'm gonna put this into the great category even though probably last week i wouldn't have gone higher than good now let's look at the two main events let's look at the night one main event which has the team of cody rhodes and seth rollins taking on the bloodline in the final boss the rock and the tribal chief roman reigns i think that this may be the best built wrestlemania main event ever <laughs> the ever the, the amount of effort that they have put forward into building hype for this is undeniable. Basically doing an entire press conference more or less just devoted for hyping up this match. There's, there's no other main event that comes to mind that even touches the surface to the hype that this thing has created. This match has been so damn hype that it forced the WWE to go from PG, travel 25 years into the past and become the Attitude Era. Not only that, but this match is more or less entirely responsible for getting us to care about the night two main event, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. But the involvement, of course, of all the superstars that are in there, the returning Rock, a new, different, evil version of The Rock as well, also just adds layers of excitement to this. And also the fact, not only that it's got implications in terms of creating hype for the night two main event, but also that it has a direct implications in terms of stipulations because as the rock says it's gonna be bloodline rules for night two cody rhodes the tribal chief bloodline okay i'm done with that joke okay it's dead and buried uh it was a joke from bad creative but the fact that it also impacts how the night two main event is choreographed is also fantastic. I will say, and this is purely nitpicking, the only downside of this feud is that I feel like Roman Reigns hasn't contributed enough. Meanwhile, Seth Rollins, Cody Rhodes, and The Rock are all working overtime to get this feud over, and Roman Reigns has sort of just been a background character to The Rock's antics. But even with that nitpicking, I stand by saying that I think that this is the best built, most hype main event in WrestleMania history at the very least ever since i've started watching wrestling in 2002 i can't think of a more hype main event than this hall of fame and if there was a tier above that i would go five tiers above that because that's how confident i feel in saying that this has been the best built wrestlemania main event of all time okay now let's look at the night two main event the show that's supposed to be closing the show the match for the wwe undisputed wwe championship in roman reigns versus cody rhodes this match has been a roller coaster of emotions in terms of how we got here we had cody rhodes win the rumble look at roman say you i want you 
and then go on SmackDown and say, yes, I do want you, but not at WrestleMania. Here's The Rock. Everyone got pissed. Hashtag we want Cody. WrestleMania press conference. The bloodline is stupid is you're all just Goonies. The Rock just slaps Cody Rhodes. And then we have the final boss becoming heel. And here we are at the point where all we all more or less care about is the night one main event and the wwe has done a pretty darn good job of making us also believe that the only thing that they care about is the night one main event all of the efforts have gone towards building night one to the point where they've done little to nothing to hype up the night two main event and i do believe that that is problematic even though at the end of the show i could be entirely wrong and this could be super hype but i'm not talking about the actual hypeness of the match itself when it actually the bell rings and it's actually happening i'm talking about the buildup. it's been objectively poor we've had one one proper interaction between roman reigns and cody rhodes just those two that don't involve the rock or other people and even that segment frankly was kind of weak and it ended with of course seth rollins get involved jay uso the members of the bloodline so even then we couldn't even build up enough hype between just the two people that are in the ring will this be hype when we get there yeah probably but is it hype leading into it no it isn't i think under most circumstances i would be really nervous that the hype and the excitement and the reasons for me to care about the night two main event rely solely on how good the night one main event goes because it's purely relying on the carryover hype from night one to night two my concern is what if it's not hype what if the night one main event falls flat but frankly when i look at the people involved the likelihood of that happening is pretty much entirely zero i'm also undoubtedly excited purely on the star power of the people that are involved so because it's gonna get some not some a lot of residual hype from the night one main event the people that are involved and you know all of the different ebbs and flows of this entire saga that's been happening ever since february i'm at the very least gonna put this into the mech category i don't think that it belongs in trash but it's problematic in my opinion that your closing match right now has me meh in terms of hype and build all right folks that's the tier list thank you very much for watching this let me know if i'm completely bananas on any of this but this is all my opinion this is your chance now to sound off in the comments it's actually a pretty chill comment section here which is a pretty rare thing for the internet wrestling community but that's it i'm done get out of here